you guys, Tomboy61, and today we're in the ARP Haruna. Also, we'll be in the ARP Kashima, Kirishima. Basically, today we're going over the arpeggio of Blue Steel content, both the ships going over their stats slash changes from the Congo, and then also going through and ranking the five arpeggio Blue Steel commanders and figuring out which ones are ones you may want to get and which ones you uh, can just toss aside. So, First things first, let's go ahead and talk about these ships. Now, both of them are available in bundles for 15,000 doubloons. They come with the ship and then also the commander of that name. To note that this is the only way you are guaranteed to get a specific commander. It's the only way you could straight out either buy Haruna or Kirishima. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, Haruna and Kirishima are both sister ships to Congo and as such, they are relatively similar to Congo. In fact, um, the stats are nearly identical, which, but they just kind of shifted a couple of them. Basically, Congo has the best of the main guns. Then Kirishima and Haruna both give up um, uh, under half kilometer of range. And in exchange, Haruna is going to get better secondaries. Kirishima is going to get better AA coverage. That is pretty much all of the changes. Beyond that, you're not missing out really on anything. And besides the small the small buffs they have to those to these ships, like the small the small gains that they have in both uh, secondary fire and in uh, AA damage, they are not very substantial. And I would actually probably prefer the extra bit of range that the Congo gives you as opposed to the benefits of the other two. But I do like that they didn't just kind of straight up mirror the other two ships. But overall, they're both playable. I just don't really find uh, the advantages over Congo to be there. Now, one of the cool details, which you may have noticed uh, already, is if you look, the, uh, the fire on them is all anime looking. I think what they did is they basically bumped up the saturation on the particle effects off the ship because both the fires on this ship and also the uh the the like smoke clouds from firing look different and you know what that's pretty cool that's a nice little um artistic little change to the ship which i do really appreciate like that shows a little extra effort and i do really appreciate it but once again uh, as far as a tier four premium ship goes i don't think i will be using these ships very much at all Next, let's go ahead and talk commanders. Now, uh, caveat here. The commanders are only available in crates. They are not duplicate protected. Uh, I'll, I'll go over uh, to Rowan HKC. Uh, he decided to do the math on, the, on this. Uh, he's over, he was over on the subreddit. I'll go ahead and put up his post. He basically uh, says, First, he breaks down the equation he used. I went to my friend who has his bachelor's in mathematics. I was like, Does this, is this math correct? Because I'll be honest, guys, I graduated with a degree in mass communications. Not not a math person. I can do math, not this kind of math. I, unless it's like basic math, you're, I'm not the guy for it. Anyways, with a probability of 3%, which is what each commander has as a uh, potential drop, in the crates, and remember they're not duplicate protected, the 10 crate gives you a 26% chance of success on getting the one commander you want. If you expand that to the probability to 15%, which would be you want any of the commanders, then the 10 crate bundle gives you roughly an 80% chance of success. Obviously this means the Kirishima and Haruna bundles are preferable if you want one of those two commanders. If you want the complete set, be warned, you need to buy 76 crates to have a roughly 90% probability of success. Um, or if you're unlucky, it could go up to 151 to get to about a 99% chance of getting all the commanders, which is ridiculous. Like, I hopefully what's going to happen is next year around this time, they will end up selling the, the commanders uh, on their own. As we've seen uh, this past go around where we were finally able to pick uh, which of the, the I'm forgetting the last set of anime girls, the Azur Lane, we were able to pick out which Azur Lane commanders uh, we actually wanted to buy with money in, as opposed to uh, counting on crates. But as of now, just be warned guys, those are the percentages and that is the mathematics behind it. Uh, if your wallet is not up to it, 
don't feel the pressure. I'll be honest, none of these none of these guys are must gets like I feel like some of the Azure lanes were. They are just a couple of a couple of them are just a little more powerful. Uh, and they do offer some interesting base traits, and that's really what it is. Hopefully, like I said, I don't know this by any sort of imagination or stretch. Hopefully, these will go on sale uh, in a year as individuals. Anyways, with all that said, let's now go ahead and talk through which commanders, and we're going to go ahead and basically rank them from best to worst. So starting off our list is going to be uh, Gunzo Shiha. Oh, once again, I apologize if I don't pronounce these names correctly. One, I'm not a bunch of an anime person. And two, realizing that this is a guy, I can't just call this the anime girls content because usually that's what I uh, describe out of. Anyway, uh, Gunzo has uh, his unique base trait is going to be um, hold my gear. And what that does is it increases the resilience and reduces repair and reload times of torpedo launchers for any ship type. And like, while this seems like a great idea, I think the biggest problem here is just how small those percentages are because the stat boost is being broken over three different objects. The, the relative boost to each of them is very minuscule, minuscule, even when you upgrade it all the way. So I don't really feel like this is the best option because there are better options out there to use up that inspiration slot. His, his unique, uh, his unique skill is torpedo bundle. It greatly reduces the reload time of torpedo launchers at the cost of lower torpedo damage. And this is interesting. Um, the, the reduction in reload time is nice. Um, and it really, this one really comes up to you because if we're being honest, the, the, uh, Japanese torpedoes, which all of these commanders are Japanese. You cannot use them on any other, uh, type of ship. You can only really use the base traits on other ones. Japanese torpedoes tend to hit like a truck. So could you shave off some damage and not lose too much? Yes, but do you want to shave 10% off for um, the reload boost? Mm, maybe. It, that one's up to you. This is why this one is one that I don't think I will ever run and probably never invest any more skill points into. So yeah, that's Gunzo Shiha. The next one that I'm going to say is going to be Iona. Now, the only thing I would say is if you are a carrier main, you may want to look into to trying to acquire Iona just because of her base trait. It's going to reduce the aircraft restoration time. I think with a lot of the the aircraft carrier commanders, you've I feel like I've pretty much pigeonholed myself into add Space Fishy to get extra speed on torpedoes, add Chinaka to get extra damage on torpedoes. And that's pretty much what I've done across my fleet. I don't really feel like the anti-aircraft buffs really do much. Um, they might now that there's nine planes uh, in each squadron. But that being said, now that there's nine planes, you also have nine planes at risk, which may need to be regened. And this uh, percentage boost to plane re regeneration is probably going to be the way to go to uh, help yourself out in that department. And that's why I like Iona just for that base trait. Her, her unique skill is going to be sorry, not sorry. It increases your dive bomber speed and damage of your plane's HE bombs. This is great, but as we said previously, Japanese commanders only. What is the weakest part of Japanese carriers? The dive bombers. Are you going to give up that extra torpedo damage for this? Probably not. Torpedoes seem to be a far more consistent way to deal damage. And if you want to kind of focus all in one thing, uh, stick with what you're already strong with. Don't try to boost up r other random stats to make yourself even. Go ahead and specialize. And I think uh, Iona's skill doesn't kind of steers you away from uh, focusing down on a singular objective. My next one is going to be Haruna. Um, this is one where I won't be using her in as a commander, but I do really like her inspiration just because it boosts secondary range. So if you want to do that balls to the wall, all out Ciliax porcupine with hipper and her, like this could be, uh, once you get it all the way upgraded an insane, uh, secondary build to even further increase the range on secondaries of like Bismarck and such. I think this is going to be a meme level kind of one where you're like, you're not really going to use her. You're only going to use it if you want to do stupid secondary builds. Um, and if you want to go ahead and do it, I think this trait is more valuable to more people, which is why I'm putting her in this kind of number three slot. Just because, yeah, it's it's a little bit better than what uh, than I think the airplane restoration. I think more people would get more use out of this skill. But overall, I 
I, I don't see it as being her being the most valuable. That's her base trait. Her, uh, her unique skill is uh, Floating Fortress. It reduces the incoming torpedo damage and damage to your ship Citadel, which is nice. Like, that is a nice skill to have, but I don't know if I would fully uh, use her. I, I, I still want to maybe stick with Ciliax as my primary guy. So, yeah, there that goes. Now let's move on to who I think is the, the number two, and I think that's Kirishima. I've already started playing with her just because I think she has an interesting build with her skill in previously released commanders, um, and I've been having a decent amount of fun with her. Uh, basically, her main skill, which is great, and if Wargaming continues down the ability to give uh, battleships the ability to equip that concealment mod, I think this ties in with that perfectly. Uh, her main... Her base trait reduces the duration of, of increased detectability after your battleship of your battleship after you fired your main guns. So it basically causes you to drop spot earlier, which is great. It's a super powerful skill. Uh, we've had it for cruisers and destroyers from the French. I'm very happy we finally have one for battleships because it is playing into that style that uh, Wargaming has started to kind of let the Japanese and some of the British ships uh, specialize into. And I am looking forward to using this on a couple of other commanders. And then her uh, unique skill is Sky Control. It increases the damage of your battleship's AA guns and decreases the, de decreases the Catapult Fighter's reload time. I think this is great just to pair with Arth Arthas the Cold, which if you don't know, Arthas was one of the Warhammer 40k uh, commanders. And his ability um, increases the damage you, have, you cause while your Catapult Fighter is up at the cost of catapult fighter duration. So what you can do is you can go ahead and pop it and get a 20% boost to damage. Kind of a unique way to play, but one that I'm very much enjoying just kind of messing around with at current, just as a, oh, he's broadside right now. Okay, let's roll the dice, see if we can just get an absolutely massive deletion by increasing our damage by 20%. Um, and which is why I've, I've sunk a couple of extra points into her and have been using her in games. The final one, and I think is the most the most powerful, um, I'm going to call it Taco because it looks like Taco to me. It's probably not. It's probably like Takao, but I like Taco, so we're calling it Taco, damn it. Um, Taco's um, un unique uh, skill is Toss and Turn. It increases the damage of your cruiser's AA guns and improves your ship's steering, um, which is really great if you are one of those people who loves agile cruisers, who likes kiting cruisers. This is an amazing skill that you can then pair with a Zerlane Baltimore just to get ridiculous rudder shift times on your ships. Her unique skill is going to be Seer, which increases the main battery traverse speed of your cruiser and increases torpedo detectability range. Also great skills to have right there. I think overall she is probably the most powerful and probably going to be the most useful if you want to run her. Um, run her on your ships and also use that base trait, which I think is why I'm I'm saying I'm kind of siding overall with her being the best one. Now, as far as a buying strategy goes as to which ones I would purchase or how I would go about this, I don't think I would spend the money on either the $15,000 or 15,000 doubloon bundles. The only thing I would do if I was putting my money is maybe go into the shop and buy. There is a double pack, so it's basically two for the price of one and just kind of roll the dice there. I don't think it's really worth it to spend the large sum of money you would probably have to in order to guarantee yourself one of these commanders when none of them really jump out to me as really game changing. Um, like I said, the only two that really jump out at me and ones that I will probably be using a little bit more in the future are Kirishima and uh, Taco Takao, you know, that one. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think down below and uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See ya.